Greetings everybody, welcome back to another small tutorial. Today I was working on this hyper casual game. Uh, you might know about it if you've been looking at the channel recently. And I was actually just creating a simple control effects over here for my sound effects and my music volume in my game. And I thought I'd share that with you, maybe it's interesting, maybe it's something you'd like. It's a radial fill, as you can see, so I can control the volume of my sound effects just using a slide controller like that, and it's a, it's a radial fill. So basically if I go this side, you're gonna see it snapping. Um, there's also a way to turn this into, well, you can smooth this up basically with alert if you'd like to do that. Um, I like mine to be more reactive, so I left it like so. I'll be taking you through this, it's actually quite simple. It's very similar to the virtual joystick script. So if I am to show you exactly how this is made, it's a very, very simple setup for these objects. So let me quickly go through it. Sorry about the mess, I have a, <laughs> It's a little bit messy right now, the project isn't super clean, but let's have a look. It's over here, it's called, um, I have a script called, I think it's radial field, and we'll have a look at it in a moment, but right now this is the setup of the object. So over here, I have a background image. This is like the main object that contains the background image. You don't see it right now, but if, um, if I go ahead and I deactivate the one that has my radial fill on it, you'll see I have this background image, but I also had this one prior. So if you guys remember, let me just re-enable everything so you have a better look at it. Um, I have another image behind it that acts as like the remain of this uh, circle, basically. So it's just a full circle. There is nothing on it. There is no fill. As you can see, it's my hollow circle. Nothing to do with that. It has a little bit of grayed out, so I can play with this if I want. Um, and then I'll also have another just for the background, so just so I can see my number in the background. This is definitely not required, but I like it for myself, and what else? I'll also have a label for text above it and inside of it, but that doesn't have to do with the script itself. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So that's all we have. It's a very simple object. All you really need is two, uh, um, two image, or only one, in fact. Uh, if you were to use this without anything else, it would look like so. So if you just follow the script, this is what you'll end up with. A very simple thing. Just make your object around it, obviously, if you need to have a little bit more de details. Um, having that said, let's have a look at the script. This is also going to be on the website, so if you want to head over, you want to download it instantly, you can head over to the website, which is right here, under download. Right now we have a maintenance, but uh, by the time it's actually up, you can go over here, type in radial, and you'll find this. Actually, you'll find the thumbnail of this video, including a link to what you can download. So, this is my script, fairly simple one. It's very, very similar to the virtual joystick. So let me quickly go through it. Um, you, can, you can go ahead and copy it if you'd like, but then I'll go ahead and I'll explain how this works. I have an action for um, other script to subscribe to it in case I wanna know when my value change and also I wanna know the value itself. I keep myself a private reference to the image so I can modify the fill amount in the future over here and um, I assign that image. So right here, I'm assuming that the image that I'll be doing the radial fill on, so the image that I'll be uh, modifying the fill amount on is also the same image um, that is on the same object as my script. Oh, and one thing I didn't mention, but I really have to do, so I forgot about that, crap. Um, your image, in, in order for this to work, your image will need 100% to be under the fill mode. So if you have a look over here, my image, is under image type field. And this is this is very important because if it's on the default simple, you can modify the fill amount as you want. It's just not gonna do anything. However, if it's on fill, well, you get to have this effect. You can also change this if you don't want this to be on top. You can start that from the bottom, pretty much anywhere you'd like. So now that you know that, we can move on and um, head back over here. Oh, and also do note that you have different type of fills. So you can also do horizontal if you'd like. You'll just have to modify the script just a tiny little bit. So having that said, let me head back inside of the script. And here is where we do some magic. It's a public void on drag being called automatically. And I'll explain to you why in a moment. We then have the public on pointer down, which is also being called automatically. Uh, again, this is some magic. And this magic is caused because we are using these two interfaces. So I drag handler and I pointer handler, which is going to work on um, pretty much every single new UI component. So that's buttons, that's images, that's all of that. It's going to work there. It's actually based off um, the event system. 
So as long as you have an event system, which you will have automatically by creating a canvas, you will have access to those as long as you have a UI element. We then have set ratio, which starts a coroutine in case I wanted to do this over time. So in case I want to do something like, hey, you know, you want to, I want to update this thing, but I want to update it over time. Then I had a coroutine to do so. So if you just want to have like a smooth, um, let me give you an example, actually. So let's say we go here. Instead of doing a set ratio, what I'll do is I'll do a set ratio with a duration. So maybe um, because I have the script to do it, I just didn't like the effect myself. Uh, let's say it takes one full second. Then you can end up with something like this. You might like this. I personally didn't. So that's why I didn't use it. Uh, in fact, you know what? What I could have done is just simply put it that way. There you go. Um, okay, so is that going to work actually? This might not work. I'll just do set rate. Actually, no, this is going to work because that's my default parameter here anyway. Um, right. So what I'd like to do next is show you a little bit of something. So what happens when you do on pointer down is the exact same thing that happens when you do the on drag. That's the on drag. Um, on pointer down is being called when you first click and on drag is all, you know, as long as you're dragging your cursor, as long as you're dragging your mouse, it is going to stay there. Now, obviously I didn't want to have the, um, the, the lerp when I was dragging. So that's why I removed it. Um, okay. Are we ready to jump into the meat of this thing? Oh, one thing that's very important is that we do call the on value change. So if we have other script that do subscribe to a radial fill, so other people that need to know about the amount um, that goes from this control, um, then of course we call this invoke. So they have that information. So they receive this information in case they are subscribed. And I'll show you how I did subscribe to this on my single uh, little meter that you saw earlier, like the number. <laughs> okay. And that's it. We just do a update circle graphics. And we fill in like that. If you don't want to use a coroutine, again, I know I'm, I'm a little bit tiring, but if you don't want to use a coroutine, what you can simply do is something like so. And that will avoid you from using a coroutine. I know some people don't like doing that, myself included in the past. So here you go. Okay, now let's jump into the meat of this thing. That's the big algorithm. That's the one that sells. So what do we have over here? First, I declare myself a position, which is just a normal vector. It's vector 2.0, basically. And here, I use the rec transform utility to know whether or not my mouse cursor with the event, the event system, if my mouse cursor is within the rectangle. Um, every UI element has a kind of rectangle subscribed to it, not subscribed, but like part of it. Now I check if my cursor is within it. And um, if it is using these parameters, so if it's inside of this very specific rec transform, if the position I get from my event system is inside of it using my own camera, the one that is associated with the event system, if it is, then I'm going to output the value, the position value of my mouse inside of boss. So at this point, inside of this if statement, we now know that our cursor we've clicked and we are inside um, of this rectangle, we are inside of this UI element. And then after that, you have to do a little bit of magic to know where exactly your cursor is. So first I check, are we on the right side of the image? Are we on the left side of the image using these, using the position? And then of course it might change depending on where your pivot point is. So if your pivot point is on the left hand side, your value is going to be different than if it's on the right hand side. So you have to play around with that. I use 0.5 as a reference. So I use like the center of the image as a reference, but then I do some little magic here to, um, to get the proper information I need. And then using the two value I've calculated, I use the center of my image as like a point in the middle. And then I create myself a vector going in a certain direction. So if I'm going all the way on the right up, then of course it's going to be one, one. And then I'll know, well, with that, I have like a direction. I have a vector that is a directional vector. Then from that point, I'm going to say, hey, uh, my radial field, it starts from up, right? It starts from the top. So I'm gonna use that vector and I'm gonna use it with my directional vector. Now I'll have the difference in between the two angles and I'll get that difference in between the two angles using this exact formula over here. And that's how I've done it. That's how I got the angle from this and then we can create a ratio out of that. So what I do is I take my angle and I divide it by 360, which gives me a number in between zero and one. And that's it. That's it. Sounds a little bit complicated, but uh, well, the whole algorithm is in here. So if you want to just copy it, 
you're free to do so. If you want to download it from the website, you're also free to do so. As I've mentioned, a couple of things you have to make sure, whoop, that's my ugly image. A couple of things you have to make sure um, are toggled is you need to first have image that are set on tile. And also depending on where your fill amount starts. So if you start from the top, then you're going to have to change this to vector3.up, which I do here. Um, and if it's from the bottom, then of course change that to vector3.down. And that is actually going to be it. Now, let me show you how I actually do subscribe to this because I have some label in here, so like this knob over here. It's actually subscribed to this very specific circle and I do it in a very easy manner, actually. This game is getting a little bit messy, so I have very long script, but here it is. It should be in the start. Yeah, radial. Okay, so register radial fill event. What I do is I take my object. So I have my radial fill object over here. I have it as a serializable field, which means what I've done is um, on my object that has a script, I have the SFX fill over here, which is the script. So I gave myself a reference simply by dragging it in here. And then using that reference, I've subscribed to it on value change, which is of course the action we have. And I've created myself a function called on SFX change. Down here, I use a ratio I receive to modify the text of another object. And I also change the, um, <laughs> also change the real value in memory as well. So having that said, this is how we've created a very simple radial effects. I thought you guys might like it. I wanted to share this with you really quickly as I was working on this game. Um, I'm almost close to release. I do have to integrate a lot of sounds. I have to redo a lot of art. Yeah. Yeah, we're pretty much ready to go very, very soon into a, a normal beta stage. So thank you so much for watching. Please join us on Discord. Please leave me a like on YouTube and also subscribe. Share with your friend if you have to. And um, yeah, I'll see you around.